Genshin Impact is an amazing anime RPG, taking inspiration from the Zelda franchise in an open world playground of catastrophe. Infiltrating a cathedral, slaying dragons, and the ever impossible task of a dating simulator are thrusted directly in your face, so it's natural to have the powers and finesse to handle the challenges ahead. But what if we were to delete, oh, I don't know, a third of our moveset and see how much more difficult our lives become? Can you be Genshin Impact without elemental skills? The rules are fairly simple, just don't press E. That's it. To make it easier on me, I set the key bind to the skill to... Here, 6. If I ever for some reason press 6 at any point in time, I need to exit the area, teleport out, or leave however I can to reset what I'm currently doing and try again. But just in case, if we're forced to use our skill, we'll keep a running total in the corner here. And one last thing, Genshin Impact is a pretty big game, so we're only handling the Land of Mondstadt this episode, and we're only wishing on the standard banner. With that out of the way, let's see if we can beat Genshin Impact without skill. I mean skills, what, what do you mean? I'm a good gamer. When he... Luckily, we're given no skills at the start of the game, so we follow Paimon and swim our way to the first statue of the Seven. However, as soon as our run started, it needed to end. Once we obtain the power of Animo, the game forces us to test out our new powers, one of which is to cast our elemental skill on a bunch of unexpecting slimes. Mission failed. I tried everything to get around this, pushing the slimes into the water or killing them in any other fashion than using your skill will respawn the slimes and you to the island, and swimming away like a little coward will force you to come back. Even drowning, that I totally didn't do on accident, still spawned us back on the island in front of the slimes. What happened? What happened? Unfortunately, we do need to take the L and cast our skill once. This is now a minimus- Oh, come on! Yep, Animal Traveler has two ways to activate a skill, one where you tap and one where you hold the button. And this horde of slimes is to teach you the hold version. Even if we could hold the skill during the first cast, we won't be able to kill the slimes in the first group in time to use our held skill on the second. So we can't merge the two skill uses into one and must activate it a second time to blow away the enemies. Luckily, the final part of the tutorial demonstrates his burst. Now we haven't limited that, so we're one tornado away from continuing the story. Walking along, we find a couple of hilly trails and a chest we'd like to steal. But here is where we find our first disadvantage of our challenge. We just can't do damage. Animal Traveler's skill is amazing at swirling the elements around him to deal even more damage, but without it, we do pitiful damage. We're forced to play Physical Traveler until we find a better character. And find it we shall, because later down the road, we meet Traveler's damage dealing replacement. Amber? Get out of here, Traveler. Amber is the star now. Yeah, many people eschew her usefulness and dump her in the chance to get a fifth character, but bear with me when I say that Amber is the best character early game, and that's because of her weapon type, the bow. Out of the five weapons characters can wield, only two are able to access the elements without using their skills or bursts, the catalyst, which is literal magic powers, and the bow. By holding the button, Amber will enter an aimed state, charging up enough energy until she's able to shoot an arrow imbued with fire. It's just unfortunate we can't do anything with the power she casts, but it's our highest source of damage right now, so you'll need to get comfortable with her. Also, if you're a good gamer, remember to get those headshots, they will always crit. After making our way into Mondstadt, fighting against Storm Terror that should have been used elsewhere but basically wasn't, and speaking with Jean, we find the best part about this game, gambling. Going to the end, it is number 10. No joking. <laughs> I got Kaya. Why is it going all the way to the end? Oh. Oh, oh, this is actually good. Now we actually got some good luck with wishing, but we'll need to wait a bit to understand its true power. We start off with Amber's Temple, which luckily doesn't ask much from us. We see how important Amber's charge attacks are, dealing massive damage, and we soar through it, breaking the first stone. We then respect our wishes and head for Kai's Temple next. While Kai has the same problem as a Traveler in that he can only do physical damage, he's just better at it. We do find the section where we're told to cast our skill to get across the water, but you know, we're such a good gamer that we just run and jump and make the gap. Oh, and this part? Like... Seriously, you could just run through the fire. I don't even know why they allowed that. But yeah, no need Kaya. While Kaya seems like Traveler 2.0, once we leave the temple and earn our Kaya, pair him up with our lucky wish we had before, and we've now got a beast on our hands. Get out of here, Amber. Kaya is the star now. For those who don't have C1 Kaya, <coughs> me, <laughs> it gives Kaya a 15% crit rate boost to normal and charge attacks against Cryo opponents. While we can't normally get Cryo without a skill, we do have two other ways. Those being attacking elemental beings like slimes or casting his burst, which let me remind you, is allowed in our challenge. But this is where our second disadvantage comes in, getting energy. You may have noticed that I haven't been using my bursts, like, at all. And that's because they haven't existed yet. The only way to fill up energy is through elemental particles and orbs, and guess where the majority of supply comes? From the elemental skill. Without it, we're forced to pick up the orbs we occasionally get from damaging and defeating enemies, which isn't a lot. 
You may be wondering why I'm bringing this up when I'm talking about Kaya C1, and that's because of our second wish, the Favonius Sword. This beast of a weapon gives you elemental orbs when you deal a crit, but it isn't too applicable early game when everyone has like 5% crit rate. However, pair it up with Kaya C1 and we've got something that can somewhat reliably generate particles for us. It does need Kaya's burst to activate, but once you do, you'll be able to generate at least half of the energy back. With Kai in tow, we make it Elise's temple, and hers was probably the easiest. While we can't deal much damage with her, we can deal with all the Electro things in here because, well, Lisa's a Catalyst user. But don't worry, Lisa will make her stand all apparent later on. After breaking the final crystal, we're hit with this thing. I honestly forgot these things existed. We're locked out of the next quest until we get to AR-10, and we get Adventure XP from things like chests and quests. To make the grind much easier, there are two ways to get fast XP until you have the quests that actually give, like, a bowl. The first is the Adventurer's Handbook. Each quest gives you 100 XP and it's so easy to complete. Opening 25 chests? Easy. Cooking some food? Easy. Obliterating the local civilians to assert destructive dominance across the land? Easy. Even if we can easily get to AR-10 with the Adventurer's Handbook alone, let's introduce our second concept of getting XP fast, the Domain. The Monsat Weapon Ascension Materials Domain, to be specific. It's the closest one, and the only one open in Mondstadt, but we can only get in after leading four Seelies through the totems, then activating the central animal column. While we can get three of them easy enough, the fourth one needs another animal column to be activated. I tried lining up the columns so that the Traveler's Burst would hit both, but alas, the column stops the tornado in its tracks. That meant I had to use the Fav Sword to get enough energy to refill the Traveler's Burst. It was a bit longer than I wanted to. Make sure you don't kill the enemies. They won't respawn, and you'll have less chances to get energy from them. Please crit. Please crit. Please crit. Oh no! How do you die? No, you killed your friend! Once you get his burst though, unleash it on the final animal column and watch as the domain rises from the floor. If you're enjoying this challenge so far, be sure to drop a like, a sub, and ring that notification bell to get updated on the next episodes. And make sure to check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash gamerperson06. Not only do I stream this challenge video right here, but I also stream other fun games and also challenges as well, such as Valorant and It Takes Two Solo. The domain itself isn't difficult at all, just 20 Hydro Slimes that you gotta defeat fast enough, and at least the domain's debuff doesn't directly affect our run. And here's where I found the importance of Lisa in this challenge. Her electro attacks will always apply electro charge on the slimes, dealing further damage and killing them faster. Her AoE is amazing too, especially with her charge attack that spreads really far. Use it often as you jump cancel to dodge. It turns out that she sweeps this floor compared to Kai, and she wasn't even at level 20. Get out of here, Kaya. Lisa is a star now. Yeah, okay, kind of. They kind of co-ed the star stand. They're both amazing. Kai is better with regular damage, but Lisa can dominate with reactions. Abusing our resin gets us to Adventure Rig 10, and now we can start stealing. We find Venti and make our way to the cathedral to steal the Holy Lyre. This is the first stealth section we have, and our challenge actually stops us a bit. We're given stones to attract the guard's attention and make the passage much easier, but that requires the elemental skill to throw. We aren't able to use it, so we have to sneak by legitimately. Once we find out that the Fatui stole the Lyre, we head off to their stronghold to steal it back. Elik makes an appearance here, but other than making this already easy dungeon a walk in the park, he's going back into the bag. To repair the liar, we need three more of Devalin's tears. One of them is sitting in a chest in Dadopa Gorge, and we just walk up there to get it. The second one is in this domain, and there weren't many problems getting to the end. The third is a bit tough. We have to take down this Ruin Guard that's 70% resistance against physical damage, so Kaya's not an option. And it's not imbued with an element, so that leaves Lisa out of this. That means Amber has to come out again to take it down. As a bow user, she can easily stun the Ruin Guard with a shot to its eye. But how would Amber get her damage in? Isn't she in the same boat as Lisa? Exactly. And we'll be using that to our advantage. Make sure to get Lisa's burst before the fight starts, then cast it once the Ruin Guard is down. Lisa will provide an almost infinite Electro Aura, letting Amber overload the Ruin Guard to oblivion. Mind you, this can work the other way around, but Lisa's lamp lasts much longer than Amber's fire rain, so watch out for that. After obtaining the final tier, we repair the Lyre and make our way up to Star Snatch Cliff. And we're hit with another AR block. Are you serious? Luckily, now is around the time when we're introduced to daily commissions, and getting a total of 1,200 XP is definitely going to help a lot, but not enough. So we're going to have to resort to social interactions and take on the character story quests. Kaya's and Lisa's are actually pretty chill and can be done really easily, but Amber's is outright impossible. Everything's fine and dandy, getting XP after every race course you finish until you reach Raptor's Hideout, where you're presented with an impassable roadblock. Amber decides to make clearing the domain the final part of the gliding exam, and as all you know, you can't attack with your sword in the air. That means Amber gives you a new way of attacking, bomb. 
However, she just so happened to bind the bombs to the elemental skill, and we aren't allowed to do it. You can't even go down to the ground and melee them. The game doesn't even give you an option to. I did see that if you get knocked into the air, the attack UI comes back, but I could never get it to stay around long enough to deal some damage with it. Sorry as I am to say, we're leaving Amber alone in Raptor's hideout and moving on. Remember, we're only beating the game, not completing it so we can ditch your quest and find another way to get XP. However, I didn't notice that now I'm unable to go into co-op because I didn't complete the quest. Oh well, I don't play with friends anyway. But grind the other quests, daily commissions, and domains, and you'll be able to get to AR-18, no sweat. We meet the gang at the Dawn Winery and track down the Abyss Mage Gaslight and Duvala. Luckily, we have Lisa on our side to electrocharge the shield down. After that, we make our way to the Storm Terror's lair and bust inside. We make our way up the tower and find the four light actuators we need to activate. None of them are too hard, but maybe this one. There was a slight issue because of the Pyro Abyss Mage we had to fight. Once again, Lisa comes to our save. Unlocking them all takes us back to the skies where we once again beat Duvala in a dogfight. Seriously, they should have included this elsewhere, but it's lost to the void. And the actual fight against the Balin was nothing too bad either. I use Vendi's charge attack a lot since, well, he's free, and also he has a C1 that splits his arrows into three. That's cool. And after some time, we took him down. Once we ate some sticky honey rust with Amber, we watched Venti get hit with a haymaker and complete the first act of Genshin Impact. Now it's on to Leeway. Boy, I can't wait. Oh, come on! Thank you all to whoever watched to the end. I really appreciate your determination. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, make sure to drop a like, sub, and ring that notification bell to stay updated on my next episodes. Also, be sure to check out these other YouTube creators. They make amazing challenger videos that inspired my own. Until next time, have a good day, night, etc.